evening everybody thank you for joining me um i've been doing these classes for a month now so i just wanted to um put a big thank you out to everyone who's donated for my classes and helped support me it's been um, a wild month of trying to figure out a lot of technology um, but hopefully you guys have been enjoying the classes and hopefully you enjoy, uh, enjoy this one as well. Um, a block may or may not be useful. I know I often say it and then we never use it, um, but I'm sure you've all got your bits and bobs that you usually do. And as always, don't worry if you don't have one. Uh, in a little break from tradition, we're going to start in child's pose. So widening your knees towards the edges of your mat. Big toes to come to touch, sink your hips nice and close to your heels to begin with. Find that heaviness in the pelvis. And then your hands to walk away, out towards the top of the mat, your forehead to come to rest to the floor. And just allow yourself a moment to settle in here. For your body to find stillness. And then for you to bring your awareness to your body and to your breath. Just start by taking a few nice deep breaths in and breathing it out. And just taking a little mental scan of the body, feeling your palms against the floor, the knees, the shins and the tops of the feet. And just feel your belly, your ribs, sinking towards your thighs. Maybe they're connected, maybe they're not. Feeling that length in the sides of the body. Maybe seeing if you can grow a little longer as those fingers crawl away from you. Each breath in is fully filling the lungs, really expanding into your torso. And each exhale is allowing your body to find some softness, some ease, relaxing down. Watching the breath in and out as though it's a cloud of air that you can see and just taking a moment to remind yourself to try to keep this connection to your breath, which becomes much, much harder as we challenge the body in physical shapes. Take one more breath in here. And with your breath out, let your hands walk off to the right side of your mat. And the chest moves towards the right knee and you can stay as you are here or perhaps deepening that stretch by taking the left hand and placing it on top of the right. Find extra heaviness through your left sit bone, push it down towards your heel and really focus your breath into that left side of the torso, feeling that extra length. Keep remaining soft on the exhale, sinking the body towards the thigh, the mat, down towards the floor. Breathing in. And then use your breath out, go all the way back via the center, make sure we're still nice and long, and then going straight over to the other side. Off towards the left, chest towards the left knee, hands can stay separate, or the right hand can place on top of the left. Focus your breath into that right side of the rib cage. Your inhales give you that little bit of extra stretch. And your exhales keep you soft, sinking down. Good, breathing in. And then breathing out. Let the hands come back to the center. Lift yourself up onto the knees and let your knees come a little bit closer together. A cat and a cow here, use a deep breath in, the ribs drop down to the mat, the chest lifts, look forwards as you press your sit bones to the sky. And exhale to round the spine, chin to the chest, tailbone tucks under, hollowing out the belly. One more of each, inhale. And exhale. And then back to a straight spine. Let your right knee come to the center of the mat. Your left knee to then cross over behind it. A little lean forwards if you like to let your thighs really squeeze together. Open your feet wide towards the edges of your mat and then walk yourself back a little bit like child's pose, but not all the way back. Feeling that outer hip, a little bit extra. Thighs squeezing in towards each other and hands staying forwards. 
Think of your right sit bone pushing a little bit further backwards, squaring off through the hips and allowing your torso to feel heavy down towards these crossed legs. Good, breathing in. And then breathing out, come back forward so that right knee comes back onto the floor. You're gonna sweep that left leg out behind you and then kick it off towards the left side. Let the foot find the floor. As you then sit back down towards your right heel, let your left toes turn towards the sky. So you're into this half child's pose, starting to get into this left hamstring, this left thigh. Maybe you've got the ability to fold forwards again. You can stay upright if that already is targeting that inner thigh there. So finding the shape that works best for you. It'll look different for everybody. Use a nice deep breath in, again, filling the lungs. Using the breath out, keep allowing your body to feel heavy, folding forwards if that's where you are. Great, breathe it in. And then breathing out, press your way up all the way back towards hands and knees and coming to the other side. So left knee stays into the center of the mat. The right knee crosses over behind. Really squeeze those thighs together. Let there be no gap between them. Widen the feet and as you sink your hips back, that front knee leaves the floor. As you find heaviness through the hips, think of your left sit bone moving a little further backwards, your right sit bone pulling a little bit further forwards and your chest to stay long, reaching out towards the top of the mat. Thighs are squeezing, holding on to each other. Breathe in. Breathing out. Again, a nice deep inhale. And an exhale. As you rock yourself back forwards, the left knee is the one that stays onto the floor. That back leg, reach it out, sweep it off to the side. And as you then sit down towards your left heel, let these right toes turn up towards the sky. Option to fold forwards, option to stay a little higher if that's more comfortable for you. Reach out through the heel and press the heel down into the mat. Lots of length in the chest, reaching out towards the top of the mat. Your exhales to keep allowing the body to fold. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Last one, breathing in. And breathing out. Great, press your way back up into that tabletop, bringing the knees underneath the hips, wrists underneath the shoulders with your next inhale let the belly relax down towards the mat lift the chest looking forwards and as you exhale round the spine hollowing out the belly broadening the shoulder blades really really tucking your tailbone drawing yourself back to a straight spine keeping the toes untucked so the tops of the feet onto the mat you can modify this by tucking the toes you'll find a little bit more strength there but we're going to come into a hovering tabletop so see if you can press the tops of your feet into the mat and lift your knees just slightly away from the floor keeping them very very close but not touching and as i said if you want to tuck your toes you can recruit a little bit more leg strength to help you here belly is pulling up hands are pushing down this is definitely not easy as you try and hold here and breathe. Take a nice deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, see if you can lift your hips, roll over those toes, thighs press backwards as you come into downward facing dog. And if you want to give those legs a little wiggle, a little pedal out, just to ease your body into this shape, then always feel free. Armpits are opening nice and wide. Shoulder blades staying broad across your upper back. And those heels push down towards the floor, but not being concerned with whether or not they are touching. Breathing in, keep the sit bones lifting high. Breathing out, find that transfer of weight back towards the feet. Again, to breathe in. And use your breath out to let your hands walk to the back of the mat way back until your heels place down 
feet a hip distance apart. Let your knees stay bent so that your ribs and belly rest against the thighs. Into a ragdoll fold where you can either cross your arms or dangle your arms freely. Whichever feels more comfortable as you let your upper body really relax and be heavy here as your hips stay pressing to the sky. Each inhale is allowing your spine to grow that bit longer, the crown of the head growing down towards the mat. Your breath out. Keep softness in the back of the neck, softness across the shoulders. And as always, if you want a little wiggle or a sway here, you are always welcome. Couple more. Allow yourself to keep folding, to keep compressing the torso towards the legs. Breathing in and breathing out, releasing your arms. Let your hands come to your waist, your knees to stay bent, your chin to your chest. And very slowly allow your body to unroll, to unravel as you come all the way up to stand at the back of your mat, standing nice and tall. Once you are upright, take a nice deep breath in as your arms lift to the sky, gazing up. And as you exhale, refold, nice straight long spine all the way down. Let your fingertips find the floor here. So bend your knees as much as you need to. You can use a block here as well if you have one to let the floor come a little bit closer to you. Now, we're going to take our right hand and place it in front of our left foot. The left hand is therefore further off the side of the mat, so we've displaced our hands off to the left. The left leg is going to be our balancing leg. We're going to see if we can reach the right leg directly out to the side. So swing it out and lift that foot. You'll feel it in your left leg, you'll feel it in that right leg. Option to stay there or see if you can reach your left arm out in the opposite direction, like a big sort of T shape. Keep reaching through that heel, chest pulls forwards for a long, strong spine, breathing in, breathing out, hold it guys, one more, inhale, and on the exhale, let that foot come down, maybe take a little wiggle or a shake of the legs to get rid of the tension there and prepare yourself for the second side. Left hand comes to place in front of the right foot. Right hand goes a little bit further off, off the side of the mat to one side. Lean your body weight towards this right foot and see if that left leg can leave the floor. Reach it away directly or out to your left hand side. Option to hold, not an easy option. Second option, reach the right arm out as well. Growing long between heel and fingertips and see if you can maintain your balance here. Take a nice deep breath in, stay strong through this standing leg. Breathing out, we just do one more, inhale. And then exhale, pop the foot down. Do whatever little movements you like to wriggle those legs out. From there, walking your hands forwards to the top of the mat, into a plank. Press the heels out behind you, then let your knees drop to the mat. Your body weight tips forwards and slowly allow your body to come down to the mat. With an inhale, the chest floats, the hands float, look forwards. And with an exhale, roll yourself back, hips into the sky and into down dog. Couple of breaths, allow your breath to slow a little, if perhaps that little balancing pose threw you off. Nice and long through the chest, inhale. Nice and heavy through the legs, exhale. And then with your next inhale, your right leg is going to lift to the sky. Three-legged dog, keep the top leg as straight as you can manage. Use the exhale to draw that foot between the hands to the top of the mat and your back knee to drop to the floor. Keep those back toes tucked under, lift the torso away from the thigh. Interlace your hands to then rest them onto your front leg. And as you press your hands into that thigh, let your chest sort of go up and back, moving away from the front line of your mat as your hips drive forwards and down towards it. Pressing into the ball of that back foot, lightly squeezing through your left glutes to help this left hip open. Breathing in, breathing out. Take 
take your last breath in here. And then breathing out, hands release back to the floor. Step the foot back to the back of the mat, into down dog, finding that length in the spine once more. Left leg this time, inhale to the sky. Three-legged dog. Exhale, help that foot to the top of the mat. Use your hands if you need to, to encourage it between your hands, if it's not quite feeling it by itself. Back toes stay tucked under. Breathing in, draw your torso away from your thigh. Interlace your hands to rest onto that leg, and then gently peel your body back as your hips drop towards the front line, and you find a nice openness through the whole front side of the body. Think of breathing all the way down into the belly. Finding heaviness through the pelvis as you breathe out. Great, one more, breathing in. On the breath out, the hands come to the mat. This time the back foot's going to step in to meet the front foot at the top of the mat, a big long stride. Let your feet come together once they're there. With your inhale, hands to your shins, halfway rise. Chest pulls forwards, thighs press back, a nice long and straight spine. Use an exhale to refold. Belly and thighs connect, head dangles, fingertips find the floor. With an inhale, come all the way up to stand. Draw your arms to the sky, gaze up towards them, nice long straight line. And exhale, release your arms by your sides as you stand nice and tall. Feel your feet firmly connected to the ground. The shoulders roll slightly backwards as you find a nice firm mountain pose to start a sun salute. From here, as you inhale, let your arms go up and over as your hips push a little forward so the chest reaches to the sky. On the exhale, slowly letting the hands return to the mat, the knees to bend, and let your head dangle in front of the legs. With your inhale, hands to the shins, chest pulls forwards, halfway lift. And then exhale, hands to the mat, right foot steps all the way back, big long stride, drop the knee to the floor and keep the toes tucked under. We'll add the arms this time, breathing in, chest rises, arms rise. Think of sending the arms alongside the ears as you sink your hips forwards and down. Just one more breath in. And then breathing out, hands return to the mat, the front foot steps back and into plank. Inhale. On the exhale, the knees drop to the mat. Keep your hips high in the sky, so roll the sit bones towards the sky. Let your chest come towards your thumbs as you slowly lower the chest to the mat. Looking forwards, use the inhale, ripple down onto the belly. Keep that chest floating, lift through the hands into your baby cobra. And then exhale, hands go back to the floor, pushing your body weight back, hips into the sky and back into downward facing dog. Use an inhale for the right leg to lift up, three-legged dog. On the exhale, bringing that foot to the top of the mat between the hands. Keep that back knee lifted this time. Push away through the back heel. Sink into the lunge, aiming your front knee roughly on top of your front ankle and your chest to then lengthen forwards. Press away through the heel so that your back leg is as straight as you can manage and your hips are heavy sinking down towards the mat. Breathing in and then breathing out, join, uh, bring the back foot to the top of the mat to join the front foot. The inhale then finds length, halfway lift. And the exhale to forward fold, hands to the mat, dangling the head freely. On the inhale, we're coming all the way up and over. So squeeze through your glutes, open through your belly and chest, reach and gaze up. And as you exhale, once again folding over, the hips push to the sky as the fingertips come to find the mat. Inhale, lengthen out through the spine, chest pulls forward, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, hands go down, left foot this time, strides back and drops to the knee, the toes stay tucked under. Use the inhale, rise away from the thigh, arms go up and over, squeeze your arms nice and narrow in towards your ears. And think of reaching as tall as you can, really straighten out through those arms. Breathe it in, and then breathing out. Hands to the mat, either side of the foot, stepping the foot back into plank, nice and strong through the core. 
from there. The knees drop to the mat. Roll your sit bones to the sky, just like when you're doing cow pose. The chest is lifted, looking forwards. Bend the elbows, keeping them close to the rib cage as you bring your chest to your thumbs. From there, like a little inchworm, roll your way down onto your belly. Keep that chest floating. Float the hands as you squeeze the muscles around your lower back. On the exhale, pushing your way back. Hips into the sky, finding downward facing dog. The left leg on the inhale reaches to the sky. Three leg dog. Exhale, bringing the foot to the top of the mat. Help it if it doesn't quite make it. Pick it up with that left hand and place it where you'd hoped it would land. Keep that back knee lifted. Press away through the rear heel. Lift your chest, but keep your fingertips or your hands firmly planted onto the floor into your lunge. Hips are nice and heavy. Back leg is trying to be straight. Breathing in. And then breathing out. Back foot steps in. Meets the front foot at the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen out through the spine. And exhale to forward fold. On the inhale, think up and over, lengthening the front of the body, squeezing, engaging and strengthening the back of the body. And then exhale, release your hands alongside your body, returning back to your mountain pose. Pin those shoulders back, firm through the thighs, stand yourself nice and tall. A couple of breaths. Great, moving from here, we're going to move towards our warrior one. So I want you to leave your left foot at the top of the mat, the right foot to step back, not as far as you go for your lunge, that'll be too far, but sort of um, about the distance of, of one leg. Make sure your feet are on train tracks. So you have a left and a right side for your foot. You're not on a tightrope. You'll soon realize that will not work for our balance. The back foot angles out ever so slightly towards sort of one or two o'clock and then bending that front knee, knee on top of the ankle, press down through the rear heel and feel a lift of your chest away from your belly. Take a breath in, take the arms to the sky as you lift your gaze up towards the sky and sink into that front knee, warrior one. The pelvis stays pointing forwards, so keep your left sit bone pushing slightly back and the right side of your hip pulling slightly forwards. Option to leave the arms in the sky as they are, or the right arm reaches down between the shoulder blades and the left fingertips come to find that behind you into your cow face arms. You can always use a strap if you have one to help you with the bind, otherwise just leave the arms in the sky. Breathing in, the chest keeps lifting. Breathing out, bending into that front leg, really root down through that rear heel, find length in that back leg there. Use an inhale to straighten out the front leg. If you have your cow face arms like this, you're, you're welcome to keep them there, otherwise the hands are gonna come to the waist. With the inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the front line of the body, squeeze the quad on the front leg, engage your thigh. Exhale, chest goes forward as we start to fold. Send the gaze down towards the toe and you can either leave your hands on your waist here. If you've found enough, sort of if you have the flexibility, your fingertips can come to rest to the floor for your pyramid pose. If you have blocks, your hands can rest at the block. But if you have none of those and hamstring strength isn't perhaps your, for, uh, hamstring length isn't your forte, stay with your hands on your waist, supporting the pelvis as you keep your body driving forwards. With each inhale, you're trying to keep length in your spine. So pull your chest away from your hips, but keep those hips level. So your left sit bone wants to stay pushing backwards. Your right hip bone rolls forwards and you should feel that a little bit more into that outer left hamstring. It's a big old stretch, so stay with it, stay calm. Try to find softness in the face and a steadiness in the breath. Great guys, last one, breathing in and then breathing out. You can take your hands to the waist if they're not there and rise your way all the way up. Very good. So from here, we're moving into humble warrior. I didn't even tell you this was a warrior class, but I'm sure you saw my little thumbnail. Widen your foot out towards the left side. So now that your feet are a little broader. The hands this time are going behind the back, interlacing them into a fist. With your breath in, lift through your chest, squeeze through your shoulder blades, the fist draws towards the floor. 
And as you exhale, bend into your front knee, fold your torso to your inner thigh, left shoulders trying to come to the inside of the left knee, as you then take your gaze back towards your back foot. Keep the fist lifting up and away from the body, and now try to pull your bum towards the center line of your mat. Your bum is probably wanting to swing out towards the left side, like I'm showing here. Don't let it, pull it back in so that everything stays straight. This front leg is really working hard for us. Let that chin fall towards your chest so that your neck stays nice and loose. Pressing down through that rear heel, keep sinking the body to the inner thigh, take a nice deep breath in. And then breathing out, draw the body all the way up. Well done, left leg. Left hand to your waist as you inhale. Right arm is reaching up and back. Two straight legs, finding lots of length through this front line of the body. Now from here, we're gonna have a little test of our balance. We're going to see if we can draw the back leg in towards the chest for the right hand to come to hold. So knee to chest, right hand is holding the front of the shin. If you're there, you're welcome to stay there or start to let your hips push forwards, your chest lift to the sky as your gaze lifts. As you keep hold of that shin, wobble, wobble, and find a back bend in your standing balance. Squeezing the muscles of that left leg, the glutes, the hamstring, and keep lifting through the chest. Holding, breathe in. And then we're going to transition to warrior three. So this top leg, reach it towards the back of the mat, keep it floating. Arms go alongside the body as the chest reaches forwards. So you're making that big capital T shape with the body. The pelvis is facing the floor. That means the back knee and the back toes are facing the floor. But try to keep a little lift in your chest. We're not folding forwards here. We're lengthening out towards the front of the mat. That left leg is really doing its job here. Keep holding. Press down through all four corners of your foot. Take one more breath in. And then as you breathe out, stand tall, place that right leg down and maybe just give your left leg a little wiggle. Good job, left leg. Coming to find those shapes on the other side. So your right foot to stay at the top. The left leg steps back. Make sure we have a left and a right side and that back foot turns out only ever so slightly. As we bend the front knee on top of the front ankle, we find our warrior one to begin with. Pelvis is forwards, inhale, arms reach to the sky. Think of lengthening through the front of the body as you lunge into that front leg. You can stay in this option with the arms or you can take that cow face bind. The left arm reaches between the shoulder blades and the right hand comes to see if it can find those fingertips behind your back. Just an option there for you if you want it, there to be ignored if you do not. Breathing in, keep the chest lifting. Breathing out, keep bending into that front knee, heavy through your rear heel. Another nice deep breath in here, holding. And then breathing out, releasing your arms, straightening out both legs and finding our pyramid pose next. So inhale, lift through your chest, squeeze the quad on this front right leg, nice and strong here. With the exhale, think of going forwards rather than down. Chest reaches out long, hands either stay to the waist or they can come to a block or maybe you have the flexibility to come to the floor but making sure we're not pushing our bodies too far, this is a very big hamstring stretch. Left sit bone pulls a little forwards, right sit bone pushes a little back. Trying to find length in that part of the torso between your hips and your rib cage, lengthening out. Keep your gaze down towards the mat, towards your front toe, so the neck is staying in line with the rest of the spine. Take a look at that front quad. Is it relaxed? Does it let go? See if you can squeeze it and keep that hamstring doing its best. One more here, breathing in, find your length. Breathing out, find your softness as you fold. Great, let your hands come to your waist if they're not there already, and then inhale to come all the way up to stand. 
Great. Humble warrior comes next. Let your foot widen just a little bit wider towards the right side. It gives your body space to try to come to the inner thigh. Interlace those hands behind you. Use your inhale. Fist draws towards the floor. Chest puffs up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, bend into the knee, lunging down, dropping the torso to the inner thigh. Take your gaze towards the back of the mat so the head is nice and loose and squeeze those shoulder blades together to lift the fist away from the body. Pull your pelvis towards the left side of your mat, really tuck your bum under, don't allow it to push out towards the right and keep pressing down through this front supporting leg, lunging into that front knee. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more, breathing in. And then breathing out, draw yourself all the way up nice and tall, right hand to your waist, left arm reaches up and over. Feel this length in the left side of the body, all the way from roughly your kneecap right up to those fingertips. Let's see how the balance is on this, time, this side. So we're gonna transfer forwards. The back leg hugs in, Knee towards chest, left hand holds the front of the knee, the front of the shin. You can stay here and find a bind elsewhere if the shin is a little too far away for you. Or start to let your hips push forwards. As your gaze lifts towards the sky, you're pulling that knee in towards your body as you find more of a back bending shape in this balance. The breath is steady, the gaze is steady. See if you can hold, breathe in. And then as we breathe out, this leg is gonna to kick towards the back of the room. The chest pulls forwards, the arms go alongside the body, reaching back with that back leg. Roll that left, sit, that left side of the pelvis slightly down to make sure the pelvis faces the floor, as does the back knee and the back toes. Shoulder blades pinned together, strengthen through your back, pull that chest forwards. Holding here, feel those quivers in your right foot and your right leg and see if you can maintain your balance. Breathing in, breathing out. This is the last one, inhale and then exhale. Stand yourself tall, feet together at the top of the mat. Any little wiggles you need to let that right leg feel a little bit back to normal. So that's our warrior ones, our warrior threes, and our humble warriors sort of done with. They all have a very similar position in the hips. We're gonna move on to some open hip warriors now. So as you inhale, take those hands back to the sky, gazing up. As you exhale, forward fold, hands to find the floor, head dangles freely, just pausing here in your fold, pressing your hips towards the sky, finding that heaviness in the head and just allowing yourself this moment to flop over your legs. Great, the inhale, hands to your shins, chest pulls out forwards as the thighs press back. And as you exhale, hands to the floor, both feet are gonna step back to the back of the mat. Let those knees drop back down. The sit bones roll to the sky. Think of aiming your chest towards your thumb so your bum stays high towards the sky and we're looking forwards. And then little inchworm, roll yourself down onto the belly. Keep that chest floating and as you inhale, see if the hands can lift as well. Exhale, roll yourself back all the way, hips into the sky and into downward facing dog. So with the left leg, as you inhale, reach it to the sky, three-legged dog. On the exhale, we're gonna place that foot right smack bang at the top of the mat between the hands. So if there was a line down the center of my mat, my foot has just trod on it. Drop your back heel down, so the toes are now pointing out, and then windmill your arms up to come to stand. So differently from warrior one, our warrior two, if there was a tight rope, we're on it. We're no longer on our train tracks. The front knee is gonna bend on top of the front ankle. The hips are opening, so the thighs are rolling away from each other rather than in, and then the arms are reaching wide. Palms face the floor, arms alongside the shoulders, and maybe just take a little glance towards your back hand to make sure it's doing what you think it's doing and it's not down by your leg. Keep your front knee driving wide, press into the little toe edge of your foot, 
And then from here, we're coming into eagle arms. So left arm on top of right, crossing those to let the backs of the hands come to meet. Maybe the palms can meet. And if none of that's working, just give yourself a nice big hug. We're still lunging into that front knee. The fingertips are reaching up as the elbows press away from you. So you're broadening across your shoulder blades as well. Press down through the little toe edges of your feet, breathing in, breathing out. Take one more, breathe in. And then as you breathe out, untangle the arms, let your right back hand come to rest onto the leg. The left arm reaches up and over into your reverse warrior. The front knee is still bent. Yes, that quad is still doing a lot of work for us. Keep lunging to the front line on that. Top arm pulls up and away, finding this length in the left side of the body. Holding here as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, the arm in the sky, let it come to rest onto your front thigh. Let the palm face the ceiling. And then right arm, either reach it directly to the sky or go all the way up and over, arm alongside the ear into your extended side angle. A nice long line from fingertips to that back heel. And we're still sinking those hips down and seeing how strong we can be in our legs. Now from here, take your gaze towards your back foot. I want you to turn the foot a little bit outwards so it's pointing more towards the back of your mat. We're going to then sink our hips down towards that heel. Our front toes reach to the sky as we come into our ninja warrior. Now, I may have made that name up, but I think it looks a little like a ninja warrior. A lot of people call this one a crouching warrior or skandasana. But if your heel doesn't quite reach the floor, stay on to the ball of the foot. You can leave your hands down for a little bit of balance. We want to try and get the toes facing up to the sky, as is that knee, so that we're really opening into this front left uh, inner thigh. You can keep here with your hands, keep here with your hands, or if you're comfortable and you've got a little bit extra to give, use your right arm on the inside of the knee to push the knee wider, and as you inhale, the left arm goes to the sky. Turning the chest towards that top hand. Again, this is just an option. Keep your hands down on the floor or in front of your chest. If you're already at a very challenging point, there's no need to push further. Keep the weight sinking towards the heel, even if it's not down, and encouraging your weight towards the little toe edge of your foot. Take one more as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, hands are coming in front of your chest. Let's see what strength we've got left in this side. See if you can press your way back up into warrior two. So your weight transfers forwards as you bend into that front knee, opening those arms wide and feeling that broadness across your chest. Good job, guys. Windmill your hands to the floor. Step your foot back into down dog, hips to the sky. We're not gonna do a vinyasa there. I feel you're working hard enough. Take a couple of breaths and you can take them in child's pose instead if you would prefer somewhere where you can just let the breath slow a little. You can let the face relax a little. And just finding a little bit more softness within the body. Great, up into down dog if you're not already there. And then moving to our second side. So right leg, inhale to the sky, three-legged dog. Exhale, drawing that foot to the very top of the mat between the hands, right smack bang in the middle of the mat, find your tightrope. The back heel drops down, the toes point directly towards the left hand side, and then windmill those arms up and wide into your warrior two. Keep the arms wide to begin with and check that back arm is as high as you think it is encouraging the weight of the legs towards the little toe side. So really let this front knee push towards the right side. Hips are sinking down and the torso stays directly on top of the pelvis. Try not to allow your body to sort of lean forwards with that leg. It's just the leg that lunges. Breathing in. And then eagle arms, right arm goes on top of the left. Wrapping either backs of the hands to touch, I realize you can't see me anymore, or the palms to touch, or you can give yourself that big hug. Whichever variation you have, the fingertips or the arms reach upwards and the elbows press away from you. Try not to be too distracted. Think about those legs lunging forwards and down. Keep the weight evenly distributed into the foot. 
See if you can find a little part of your foot that you've been neglecting and press down into it. Breathing in. And then breathing out, release the arms, back hand to the back thigh, right arm reaches up and over into reverse warrior. Keep bending into that front knee and drive the knee wider. Find that strength in your legs. You can do it, hold it. It might burn, but think of the strength you're building. Find a little extra length in this top right side, breathe in. And then breathing out, let your front forearm rest onto the front thigh. Feels a little different, let your thigh and your muscles be okay with it. Left arm either goes straight to the sky or goes alongside the ear, reaching out towards the top line of the mat. Inhale, find that length in the sides of the torso. Exhale, remain calm, soften the face, keep steadily breathing. Two more, breathing in. Breathing out. One more, breathing in. And then look towards your back foot, turn the toes outwards to face a little bit more towards the back of your mat, sinking your hip bones down towards that back heel. Option to lift the heel. If you can keep it down, great. Right toes stay pointing to the sky, as does the knee. This left knee is drawing wide. Not planned this well, have I? I've got my back to you. Left knee is drawing wide and your hands can either stay down or your hands can come in front of your chest. Pause here for a moment. And option, if you have a little bit further to give, Left arm goes on the inside of the thigh, so you're pushing that knee over your left shoulder, and then right arm goes to the sky. Really allowing your chest to turn, to face that top hand. Keeping the weight nice and heavy, sinking down towards the heel. Take a deep breath in here. Breathing out, you know what's coming next. Let your hands come back down to your chest. See if we can find that last burst of strength into the legs to rise back to the front of the mat into warrior two. Front knee on top of front ankle, arms reaching wide alongside the shoulders. Let your hands then windmill to the floor. Step your foot back into down dog and let's all then come to child's pose. Knees wide, big toes together, hips down towards your heels. Lengthen the arms if you like. You can take your arms alongside your body if you prefer that shape, just for a moment. Let your forehead rest to the mat and just give yourself a moment to feel nice and heavy against the floor. Great, breathe in and breathe out. Lovely, let's push our way up onto the knees. Let your knees come back together, or not all the way together, but underneath your hips. Hands to come in front of you, so you're in a bit of a sort of long tabletop. Shift your weight forwards towards your fingertips, tailbone is tucked, and we're slowly gonna let the body come down onto our belly and our chest. So that's our warriors done, you'll probably be glad to know. And we're coming into Sphinx. So. Elbows are pulled out underneath the shoulders, so they're right underneath the shoulders to help the chest stack tall. Palms to face down to the floor, forearms parallel, and imagine you're slightly drawing your elbows back towards your hips to help your chest pull up and forwards or forwards and up to find that length in the front line of the body and that strength in the back line. The front of the hips are lightly pressing down against the floor so you can feel a bit of an engagement into your bum muscles, your glutes, reaching out through your toes so all of your legs are taking part in this pose. Each breath in is really focused down towards the belly. Imagine you're stretching out the front line of your torso. Breathing out, keep finding that firmness with the push of the pelvis and the reach out through the toes. And then we're going to stay in this shape, this sphinx shape. The left arm is going to stay supporting us. So just let it come onto a diagonal. So you've got a bit more balance there. Bending the right knee, coming into a half frog. Right hand holds the right foot. And gently pull that foot in towards your bum. So heel towards your bum. 
If you had to twist to get your foot, see if you can take the twist back out of the pose and let everything stay facing forwards. And then focus on the underside of this right thigh, this right side of your pelvis, and strongly push it down against the floor. I always like to say, imagine there's a little P underneath the right side of your pelvis and try to squish it. Now, if and when you do that, you can probably really feel the difference it makes into that stretch. It makes it quite an effective stretch, to say the least. So keep your chest lifted, keep breathing steadily and pulling that foot in whatever fashion you like. You might have the rotation in the shoulder to let all of your fingertips face the same direction as your toes. Let your elbow roll then on top of the wrist and you can turn the pull into a push. It won't be accessible to everyone. Don't worry if that doesn't work for you. You can hold the foot in whichever way you like. Keep the push of the heel, the press of the pelvis and the lift of the chest. Breathe through it guys, inhale. Left shoulder's working, exhale. One more, breathing in. And then releasing that, let that foot go back down, switching sides. Give that left shoulder a break. Maybe it was distracted and didn't realize how hard it was working. And then come to the other side. So right elbow underneath the shoulder, make sure the chest is lifted. So we're not down here against the mat. Left knee to bend. Find that foot with your hand, left hand, and draw the heel towards the bum. Find a little bit of a stretch to begin with, or maybe it's already a big stretch, however that feels in your body. But then find the activation in the stretch. So press the pelvis down, a little squeeze through the left glutes. Option to keep holding the foot as you are, or fingertips face forwards. Both shoulders are often very different, so just because it happens on one side, don't be expecting it to happen on the other. The elbow then rolls on top of the wrist as you turn it into a push. Chest is lifting, and if you've taken that shoulder roll, you can feel the opening across the front of the left chest. Muscles in the lower back are squeezing, front of the pelvis is squishing that little P. Take a nice deep breath in, down into the belly, stretching the front of the torso. Breathing out, remain soft, remain calm. See if you can find a little more softness, maybe across the face, maybe into the belly. One more, breathing in. And then breathing out, releasing, letting that go. And let yourself come all the way down onto your chest. And you're going to reach from here, the right arm out alongside your shoulder. Let the palm face the floor and make sure you're going directly out by your shoulder, not sort of down alongside your body. We're then going to roll onto our right sides. Let your right shoulder rest down against the floor and then find somewhere to rest your head. You can bring a block in or a cushion if the floor is too far away option to stay here there's no need to go further or you can scorpion tail your top left leg so lifting it up and thinking of sending your toes as far up the mat as you can to rest onto the floor behind you that's going to open more into this top left hip and it'll make the stretch a little bit more intense in your upper body as well as a little bit more weight has tipped over keep a gentle press of the front of the right shoulder down against the floor and think about breathing into that top right section of the well, top section of your right lung. Really focus the breath there. Your inhale finds you a little bit extra stretch. And finding heaviness as you exhale. Perhaps if that scorpion tail has made its way quite high up your mat, you might be able to hold the foot with your hand and kick the foot into the hand to find a little more opening into your hips. Two more breaths, breathe in, breathing out. Last one, breathe in, and then breathing out, let yourself flop back onto your belly and come to the other side. So left arm reaches out, the palm to face down, but if you know that you're gonna try that bind with your foot, let your palm face upwards. It's a little bit more intense in the shoulder. Rolling onto that left side, the shoulder is down, the side of the head is down, and you can stay here. Nice place to stay. Otherwise, the right leg lifts up, stepping the foot as high up the mat as you can, thinking of aiming towards where that hand is. The option is there for the bind if you wish, 
or just allow the foot to rest onto the floor. Pressing down through the front of the right sh or left shoulder. And breathing steadily, relaxing the rest of the body. Great, breathing in, breathing out, all the way back onto your belly, flop your way down, and then let your hands come back underneath your chest. Widen your knees slightly so that you can press your way back into child's pose. Hips to your heels, arms to stay long out in front of you. Let your forehead find a place to rest as you find softness and heaviness through the body. From there, let your hands walk in towards your knees so that you can then swing your feet round. So you're coming onto your bums, maybe shuffle forwards a little so you have some space behind you. Your knees to be bent, feet hip distance apart onto the mat, arms reach forwards as a counterbalance. So then with a rounded spine, chin to the chest and tucked tailbone, you can slowly roll yourself all the way down onto your back. Once you're all the way down, hug the knees in towards your chest and give yourself a little squeeze. Thighs drawing in towards your belly, heels pulling in towards your bum and your shoulders sinking down towards the floor beneath you. We're then going to move into happy baby. So holding the front of the knees, the shins maybe if you call it that, widening the knees out towards the armpits or just as wide as your knees can go. You can stay here making sure the lower back, the pelvis stays pushing into the floor or maybe you want to take the soles of the feet to face the sky. Reaching up to hold the heels or the toes or some part of your leg using the strength in the body to deepen the bend in the knees. Keeping those toes moving wide away from one another and the knees to be following as well. Maybe if your arms are well placed, you can use your elbows to keep pressing those thighs a little wider. Lower back presses towards the floor. And it's another one of those poses that you might enjoy a soft little sway from left to right, but only if you want to. And then releasing your feet, letting them come back to the mat. Feet are together, knees are bent, and then let those knees fall wide so the legs form a diamond shape. And your hands can either rest onto the thighs to act as weights, your hands can rest alongside your body, or maybe you want to rest your arms above your head and feel that opening into your upper body as well. You can choose to close your eyes here if you wish helping encourage the body to slow down. Feeling the breath start to shallow out. And everything to move a little slower. When you feel ready, you can step one leg at a time out onto the floor. You can leave your arms wherever is comfortable, but if you want to bring those alongside your body into a more traditional Shavasana, then now is the time. Allow your limbs to feel nice and loose. A natural curl of the fingers in towards the palms. Noticing the parts of the body in contact with the mat the heels, the calves, the pelvis, shoulder blades and the back of the head. Visualizing the natural shape of the body and all those other parts that seem to just float away. Finding softness across the face, 
See if you can relax the cheeks down away from the eyes and the jaw down away from the cheeks. Keep a soft awareness on your breathing as it starts to shallow and the rise and the fall of the chest becomes a little more diminished. And then taking a deep breath in to reawaken your senses and your physical body. Finding some movements in the limbs, maybe a stretch if you wish. Your knees can then hug in towards your chest, giving yourself a soft little squeeze. And when you're ready, rolling your way up to a comfortable seated position, sitting yourself nice and tall. With your final breath in, circle the arms wide into the sky. And your final breath out for the hands to lower to the belly and the chin to lower to the chest. Namaste, everybody. And thank you so much for joining me this evening. Hoping you're all feeling just as chilled as Benny is back here. I don't know if any of you can see him in the background. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you are able to make any donations for this class, the link to my PayPal is in the description just below here. And anything, nothing is too small. Everything is very much appreciated. Hopefully I can catch you for another class soon, either this time next week, or there is a gentle yoga flow Thursdays at 6 p.m. or a similar uh, vinyasa flow class Sunday mornings at 9.30. Have a lovely evening.